Support Move University in the production of more video tutorials by making a financial contribution or by getting yourself one of these t-shirts. Details under the Support Move section on MoveUniversity.com. The link will be in the description below. Thank you and enjoy. All right, so we're going to continue our discussion of significant figures and discuss the rounding rules as well as exact numbers and sort of what's going on with those things. So one question is that what happens with sig figs when it comes to calculations and rounding? Because in calculations, you'll have multiple numbers, and maybe these numbers have different numbers of significant figures. What happens? Well, the measurements and the values that have the lowest certainty, the lowest certainty, they limit the number of significant digits. So basically, your answer can only be as certain as your least certain measurement. Okay, so let's think about an example. Let's say you're in a lab and you need to find the density of a certain block of some unknown metal. What do you need if you want to find the density? All you need is the, the mass and the volume because density, as we mentioned before, equals mass divided by volume. So we need to find both of these values. So you can find the mass by using a balance, right? And let's say that the metal you find it to be 25.060 grams. So you have an M equal to 25.060 grams. And then you use, um, you find the volume by measuring the amount of displaced fluid in a graduated cylinder. So you measure the volume of just the fluid and then you throw the, the block in there, and then you take the new measurement of the volume, and then you subtract the two to find the volume that the block displaced. So let's say you do that, and you find the volume, according to your graduated cylinder, to be equal to, um, let's say, 3.5 milliliters. 3.5 milliliters. Okay. And then you want to go ahead and find the density because you have both of these values. So the density will equal the mass over the volume. So 25.060 grams. That G is ugly. Let's try that again. G, okay, divided by 3.5 milliliters. If you do this, if you punch this into your calculator, you'll get 7.16 grams per milliliters. Now, you'll notice, though, that this number has five significant figures. This one only has two. So you're limited in your certainty by the one that has less significant figures, which is this one. So your answer can only have that many. So here, 7.16, we need to round that off to 7.2 grams per milliliter, and that's the density that we'd have. And then you can predict, based on this density, what that uh, unknown metal might be. Okay. Um, so let's look at the actual rules in more detail. So there are rules as far as arithmetic goes. In fact, we just did uh, the example of multiplication and division. When it comes to multiplying and dividing numbers with signif different significant figures, the answer must have the same number of sig figs as the measurement with the fewest sig figs. So in the case before, we had one one measurement with five sig figs and one with two, we had to give the answer with two significant figures. Here, we have three different values. This one has three significant figures. This one has four significant figures. This one has two. So our answer can't have more than two. If you plug this into your calculator, 5.45 times 6.432 times 24 meters, um, all these are meters, uh, we're trying to find a volume here. You get 841.3056 meters cubed. That's a lot of sig figs. We can't keep all of those, right? How many is that exactly? That's three plus four. That's seven significant figures. We can't have that. We have to have an answer with two, with two significant figures, because we're limited by this one. So our answer has to be 840 meters cubed. That only has two significant figures. That's for multiplication and division. But what happens when you have addition and subtraction? In that case, your answer must have the same number of decimal places as the measurement with the fewest of decimal places. So it's not, it's not sig figs per se this time. It's about decimal places. So if you have 42.6 milliliters and 18.18 .18 milliliters and you want to add these two, you've got three sig figs here and four here, your answer um, is not going to be dependent on that. It's not going to be dependent on the number of sig figs. 
It's going to be dependent on the number of decimal places. So this one has one decimal place, right? And this one has two. So your answer has to have just one decimal place. So um, if you actually punch that in, you get 60.78, right? Which has two decimal places. So you have to round that off to 60.8 milliliters. Now in both of these cases, I rounded off the answers. So basically, I removed I removed a digit to keep the correct number of sig figs. Okay. How do I know exactly what to do there? Well, there are the rounding rules. Okay. So what you do is that if the digit that you're rem first rule is that if the digit that you're removing is greater than five, what you do is you take the preceding number and you increase that number by one. So let's say we're rounding 60.78 milliliters. The we're trying we're going from these four sig figs. We want only to have we want to only have uh, three sig figs, right? We want to remove this last digit here. So we want a value with only three sig figs. Well, this is the, the digit that we're going to remove, the eight, right? Um, it, this number is greater than five, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take this previous number, the preceding number, and increase it by one to get 60.8 milliliters. Okay. Now, what if that digit is less than five? So in this case, we've got 82.34. The four is less than five. So if the three, what are we going to do with that? In this case, the preceding number stays the same. So we're going to remove this four. And then because it's less than five, the 82.3 is not rounded up to 82.4. It's going to stay 82.3. Now, what if the digit removed equals 5? And assuming that that 5 is followed only by zeros, okay, I'm going to, going to um, highlight that, only by zeros. Okay. What do you do then? What you do is you round to either make or keep the preceding number an even number. So what does that mean? That's kind of confusing. OK, so if we have 3.750, what we do, um, let's say we want to um, remove, we're going to remove the, the 5 here. OK, this number equals 5. It's followed by a 0 and only by zeros. What we're going to do is we're going to remove this, and we have to round the preceding number, which is the 7, to make sure that it's even. Well, 7 is odd. Right, so if this number is odd, we're going to um, we're going to round up to make it 3.8, which is going to be an even number. Okay, and that's because seven was an odd number. So you, it's increased if the it's increased by one if the preceding number is odd. Okay, but if if the preceding number if the preceding number is an even number, it remains the same. So 3.6 or 3.65 would be rounded to just a 3.6, and the reason why here is that so that we're not rounding up every single time, um, and rounding up more often that we're remaining the same. So um, this is to make sure that when we round, we're not over rounding up. Okay. Um, now, one thing that I must say is that if the five being removed, if the five being removed is followed by non-zero digits then you just round up. And that's often the case. Okay, so if this was 3.501 or 3.508, the fact that it's not followed by zeros means that you would have to round that 7 up. Okay. Likewise here, the 6 um, would be rounded up. Okay, um, So that would just be according to rule 1. Now I will be completely frank here with this rule number 3. Most of the time, I personally ignore it, <laughs> and that's because most of the time it doesn't really matter. Um, now, that that might like upset some people, but when it comes to being practical, like when it comes to like doing problems in your homework or on exams, um, or honestly even in labs sometimes, um, like small rounding like like this isn't the biggest deal. Um, in fact, only the, the only time I ever have actually seen this particular rule um, 
you know, be relevant is when the question is specifically asking to make sure that you know this rule. Um, that might sound kind of crazy, but hopefully that made sense. Um, yeah, most of the time, just these first two rules are enough, and this actually this last rule, rule number four, is really, really important. I, I highly value this one. Um, this one says that when you're performing a multi-step calculation, do not round your answer until you get to the final answer. Right? Do not round any of your numbers until you get to the final answer. This is really, really important. When you have a ton of different numbers, you're multiplying, dividing, adding this, adding that, you know, all these different things, most of the time it's multiplying and dividing, you're going to get numbers with crazy amounts of sig figs, and you'll be tempted to round. Don't round. It's, it's in your best interest not to. And I say that because that's going to make the, the, the answer closer to the answer that it should be. Um, now, of course, you can round a little bit, but if your answer requires, like, you know, three sig figs or four sig figs, you want to keep maybe, like, six or seven. I don't know. It, it, there's no, like, exact number you should keep, but I would personally keep as many as possible so as to make sure that the answer is as close to correct as possible. I normally just do it all on my calculator so that I don't have to worry about rounding off at all. But this is this is a rule that I really like. It's been really, really good to me. All right, next up, exact numbers. What are exact numbers? Exact numbers are numbers that have no uncertainty at all. They have no uncertainty. Okay? They have an infinite number of significant figures. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, let's let's talk about some examples. These really come in the, the idea of exact numbers are really important when it comes to conversion factors. For instance, the conversion factor equation is listed here. One dozen eggs is twelve eggs. One dozen is defined as twelve of something. So you might look at this and say, well, one, that's one significant figure. Twelve, that's two significant figures. So if I had this conversion factor, you know, as one to twelve or twelve to four or twelve to one, um, that would be, I could, you know, my answer can only have one sig fig, and that's not the case. And the reason why is because these numbers are exact numbers. One dozen is exactly 12 of things. So I could rewrite this as 1.00000 and go on forever, right? That, that many dozen is 12.00000000 all the way till forever, right? Because these values are exactly, you know, 1 and 12. Right, you can add as many zeros as you like at the end. They have an infinite number of significant figures. Right? Same thing here with one kilogram and one thousand grams. One thousand grams is exactly one kilogram. One kilogram is exactly one thousand grams. So you're not limited in your number of significant figures. You can put a point zero and a point zero, you know, go on adding zeros forever to the end of these numbers, and that, that's why they'd have an infinite number of significant figures. There there's no uncertainty at all. These numbers are exact. And one inch is 2.54 centimeters exactly. So this is actually a really, really important conversion factor when it comes to, you know, switching from the English standard to the um, to the metric system. Super, super important. Um, this is an exact number. This does not limit um, your your number of significant figures at all. In fact, that's actually what this last sentence down here is is trying to say: is that exact numbers do not limit the number of significant figures in an answer from a calculation using them. So if you have a calculation using a conversion factor that appears to have only one, two, or maybe three significant figures, um, that's not the case if they're exact numbers. Exact numbers have an infinite number of significant figures and therefore do not limit the number of significant figures um, in your answer. So I hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, be sure to hit it with a like and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Also, be sure to share the video with anyone who you think might find it helpful. Thanks and happy studying.